What is up guys, I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. Today we're gonna do some real estate color grading. So as always guys, if you find this information helpful, make sure to go ahead and click that like button down there so I know you find it helpful and that you enjoyed the video and you want more like this. But moving on, one awesome thing about being a modern filmmaker is there's so many different little ways to make modern films and so many different ways to make money. Even just being a color grader, you can have other videographers send you footage from music video shoots, from weddings, live events, interviews, commercials and you can have all these different revenue streams coming in from these different creative directions. And one thing that I find super simple is real estate. It, it takes maybe an hour, maybe two hours tops to run through and shoot a house. And then you don't need to throw effects on it or much style on it. You just need to get it nice and clean looking, very inviting looking. And usually only takes me three or four hours to shoot and edit an entire house video. And each house kind of calls for a different creative direction so you can kind of make your own film in the process each time. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop into DaVinci and we're gonna get this started. So I'm here in DaVinci Resolve 15 and I've got a few clips. Um, I've got this one here uh, from the top of the stairs kind of just revealing, you know, what it looks like when you walk in the house, you know, the foyer and, and the staircase that goes upstairs. And then I've got another shot that's kind of dark. I thought it'd be cool to go into. Uh, this is just a bathroom shot. For all these shots, I use the Zion Crane V2. Um, but I gotta say, I'm pretty, I'm pretty smooth with the gimbal. So these shots are, are pretty, pretty smooth for sure. Uh, we don't have to do any warp stabilizing or anything like that. And then this last shot of the dining room table and the kitchen. And for the real estate shoots, honestly, unless it's like a huge mansion and they're paying a bunch, then I just go ahead and shoot in a, a normal color profile. I don't shoot in log. Um, just because it kind of takes too much time later on and, and these kind of projects, you just want to kind of flip them quick. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new timeline using this first one from the top of the stairs. Um, I will say that using log can be helpful. And when I am doing a, a more pricey, uh, better paying project, you know, I definitely want to try to keep the, sh the, the lighting outside. I don't want the windows being blown out like they are here, but you know, for a simple little normal um, real estate video walkthrough, this is fine. This is totally fine. So I'm going to drag all these clips that I want here into the timeline. Uh, delete the audio because I don't need it. And this last one here, I'll actually throw that one in the middle. So I'll jump over to the color tab and we'll get started. Uh, so as I said before, I did not shoot in log, so we're not going to be using any LUTs. Plus, with real estate, um, real estate can be a lot like weddings to where you really want to show what happened. Um, I think even more so with real estate, you know, a lot of these people that are asking me to do these videos have clients that are looking from out of town. So they want to see a real representation of what this house they might be purchasing looks like without having to fly across the country to take a look at it in person. So it's our job to kind of make sure that, you know, we, we provide a realistic representation so they don't show up to the house and they're like, dang, this looks... You know, this looks a little different online. Or you don't want to screw up, and then they're like, ah, I don't think we, we like that house because you kind of portrayed it poorly. Um, so really you just want to go for something really clean and, and that represents the house how it is. So in this first one, sorry to ramble on, uh, but in this first one, um, you know, we're just going to white balance. And this little railing on the stairs was white. Um, so is this border around the bottom of the house and the doorway. So I'm gonna click on the white balance tool in the bottom left, boom, and then click on something white. I'm gonna pick the door, and I'm not in love with what it did here, but that's all right, we can fix it. Um, I'm gonna go over to the primaries bars, and I'm going to bring down the Luma Mix. As I mentioned before, uh, when we wanna move around these properties in the primaries bars, with the Luma Mix turned up, it will try to keep the luminance the same. And so by just dragging that all the way down, we can, we can play with the different properties without, you know, messing with the luminance of the entire picture. So first thing I'm noticing is it's just a little cool uh, in the highlights. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up these reds in the gain. And just kind of get it to where the green and the blue are. Because the white balance wasn't super off. It was just off enough to where we need to go in and make some extra changes. So there you go. I mean, if I disable that node, 
and re-enable it, you see it made it a little cooler, um, but we're not losing the warmth from outside that the outside lighting is bringing in. So moving forward to the next one, um, I'm going to do an exposure pass um, where I will do this all in the curves and I'll just create points in the curves where I kind of see the lighting is going. So right off the bat, I'm going to click up here because this is definitely in the shadows and it creates a point here. <clears throat> and then I can click on another point that's maybe kind of bright like this window uh, windowsill there is pretty bright. And then I want to click somewhere right in the middle, so I'll click this door. And you can see it made us three points here. And if I move this bottom one up, it's bringing up those shadows in this wall, which is exactly what I wanted, um, because I didn't really like the vignetting that was happening here. You know, style, if I was trying to create a style, then the vignetting could have been cool. But really, I want people to see, you know, how clean and, and even the painting is. And I, and I don't really want there to be shadows. I don't really want to hide anything. Um, I really want to make everything that's in this room kind of prevalent. Um, so if they want to get nitpicky, you know, it's a big purchase. If they want to get nitpicky, they can, you know, freeze the frame and, and take a look at everything. Um, so I'm going to go to this next dot in the curves. And I'm going to bring that up just a little bit. And then with these highs, this highest point in the curves, I'm going to bring that down. And this is kind of allowing this part of the luminance and this part of the luminance to meet. Uh, before there, it was a little, little bit of a roll off there um, from highlight to midtone, and I really kind of want to make that a little more level. And if I deactivate this node, you can already see we've brightened things up. Things are looking pretty good. And next in this last one, I'm seeing that we're clipping here in the top, and we're almost clipping the bottom. So I'm going to create a point here in the curves. I'm going to hold shift and create a point here in the curves. And then I'm going to pull this one down. Just so we kind of fade those highlights a little bit. Because I don't want that to be a problem later. And then I'm actually going to do the same thing with the shadows and just bring those up a little bit and you can see that's kind of affecting this chair here um the railing we're just getting a little little more detail back there and creating a little bit of a almost a film fade which definitely you know you don't want to go overboard with a film fade when you're doing real estate stuff but it's not bad to have a little just to smoothen things out and give it that pretty look and so this looks really 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 cool to me um, one thing I think I don't like is that I pulled back in the shot and I would actually like to come from the stairs and go forward. So I'm just going to go to the edit tab. This is, this is totally not color grading. It's a little side note, right click the clip and then go to change clip speed and then reverse speed change. Boom. It's as simple as that. Now we flip that clip around. So we start at the top of the stairs and we kind of reveal what's under the stairs what's you know on the other side <clears throat> let me go back to that clip and we're only gonna do a couple more things um in this one i'm just going to uh raise the contrast a little bit but we're going to do it in the curves of course uh so we can decide exactly how we're adding the contrast i'm going to create a point right here towards the middle see how that brightened everything up a little bit i like that so by pulling that up a little, everything's bright, beautiful, looks really inviting. And then I'll create a little node or a, a point here at the bottom of the curves and I'll pull this down. Just to create that kind of perfect contrast for this shot in particular. Now let me watch it back. Boom. I like that. And and the scopes isn't perfect, but it's not destroyed either. So I'm pretty happy with this. One thing I might do, just to kind of take a little uh, concentration off of these blown out highlights, is in this last node, I'll click the highlight button, go to the qualifier, raise the lows under luminance, raise the lows all the way up until we're really just getting that stuff that's blown out. Like about right there, looks pretty good. And then soften this. 
maybe push it a little over to the right a little more so we get less of this wall. Then I'll blur that just a tad. And what I'm going to do here is just decrease the midtone details, which will give us a slight glow. If I zoom in here and I decrease the midtone details, you see we're getting kind of a blur there, a blur in the highlights that we just selected. We don't want to go too too much. Just enough. And then I'll pull out and maybe even raise the highlights. So it kind of has that, you know, that unrealistic, almost like romantic comedy kind of glow. Um, let's see. What did that do? And I like that. To me, that looks a little better. Um, just personal opinion. Uh, it's really, you know, it's definitely personal opinion when it comes to this kind of stuff. But to me, that's what I would go with. It looks a little more complete in my eyes. Um, so moving on to the next clip. I could sit on this clip all day, and often I do when I'm not making tutorials. So uh, moving on, we've got this one. It's pretty dark. I'm going to hit Alt-S a, a couple times just to make a few new nodes. Just to give us some room. And then in the first one, we're going to go ahead and do what we usually do, which is white balance. I'm going to hit the white balance tool down here. And then try to find something white like this tub. And let's see, that leveled things out just enough. It was a little warm before, almost a little purplish, and this got it back to level. So moving forward in the next one, uh, in this clip, I'm going to do that same exact thing with the shadows and the highlights. I'm going to click on something that is pretty dark, like let's say this part of the wall right here. I'll click on a mid-tone, let's say about right here, and then one of the highlights in the shot. About, let's see, maybe right here. Oh, it looks like I had it a little backwards, but that's all right. And so from here, <clears throat> I'm going to move around this middle dot and kind of see where that's at. And what I'm going to do is leave that pretty much where it was and then bring up these highs. I'm going to come down here to this dot we made at the bottom. And I'm going to move this up also. And I'll show you guys what happens if I were to, to delete this, this dot in the middle. See, things get a little washed out here. And by just keeping that there, we're keeping uh, these reflections and the shading. It just looks really nice. But we're still managing to raise these sh shadows that really made the shot just too dark. It looked like the lights were off. Um, but you guys know how camera works and, and you know how that can happen when you're in a room with just lights in one spot. In real life, the room, se the room seemed lit up, but to a camera, this was not lit enough. Um, and just with that little curves change, we've really brought things back up. And we've kind of diminished the contrast by doing what we just did, uh, which would also kind of lessen the saturation. So in the next node, I just want to bring back some of the saturation. Under the saturation tab, I'm just going to raise this a little bit, just a little, because we will bring back a little more contrast in a second that will also add back uh, some saturation. So boom, in this next node, I'm gonna go straight to the contrast and I'll create a point around here and I'll bring that up slightly and I'll create a point at the very bottom and bring that down because I really don't, you know, there's shadows all the way up here, but I want it to kind of look like the shadows are more about right here and that looks nice I think my camera was doing something a little funny and I'm seeing some brown within the white of the tub or maybe the tub was dirty I don't know but one thing I'm gonna do is fix that um, because I don't feel like that's poorly portraying the house I feel like this tub should have just been cleaned and it wasn't <laughs> so um, I'm going to just make a power window, a custom power window, right around this section. Real quick. And hit the highlight button so we can see what we've selected. Then I will soften that just a little just a little 
And then I'm going to go down to the saturation. And I'm just going to start pulling that down. And then maybe I'll push the temperature a little to the off-white side so it looks a little more natural. And then, boom. Are you guys seeing that? I think it was just a lighting reflection from the rest of the room kind of spilled onto the white surface. <clears throat> so just by doing that, and then we can of course go through and track that. And voila. That's pretty awesome. I love that. So we kind of went from like a dirty wall to back to a normal, somewhat normal wall. <clears throat> so that's very cool. Very cool. I'm pretty happy with this shot. Uh, I think we could brighten it up a little more, but overall, let's see. Yeah, you could probably go to there, but I don't want to create too many shadows. And right now, or too many, too much uh, noise. And right now, we seem to be like right at that perfect spot where we're not getting noise. We've lit the room up like crazy. I mean, it looks way better, and we're not getting noise. So I'm just gonna leave it pretty much right there, and go on to the last clip we're gonna work on which is this beautiful shot of revealing like the kitchen dining room area. And I'm gonna stop it right here. <clears throat> and one thing you can always do in this first node, I'm just going to lower the highlights. Cause sometimes when you overexpose, you can regain some of those highlights. And obviously, even though that I'm lowering the highlights, we are not regaining enough of the outside. So it's really kind of pointless. But uh, I will do our normal white balancing first. I just wanted to show you guys that real fast. And I'll hit the white balance tool, click on something white, which this island here was definitely white. And you can see that it was already pretty well balanced. Um, we could make this a little cooler. But other than that, I like it right there. And moving forward, we will go back to our exposure. So I will click something bright, like so. It's pretty bright. I'll click something kind of in the middle, be down here, or right here perhaps, and then something pretty dark. So let's go with that. And maybe one in the middle as well. Let's create one ourselves. Boom. And we'll see what, right where this one is. This one's in a pretty cool spot because really one thing we want to do is eliminate some of the shadowing that's happening around here. Make it look a little more true to life, um, which in real life there wouldn't be so many shadows. So I'm going to pull this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to go to this dot here that's kind of in this midtone section. And I'm going to bring that down a little. And with this highlight one, I'll actually bring that up. And one thing I'm seeing is that we are not well white balanced. I'm getting a lot of uh, spill here on this white surface that should not be there. So I'm going to reset the white balance uh, node and I'm going to try that again on a different spot. Maybe right here. Yeah. That's better. Not perfect, but we can kind of shift that over a little bit. Let's try the purple maybe. Yeah, and that looks, that looks good. I mean, they both look good, but, but this to me looks more accurate. And we'll make it a little warmer. All right, we'll just leave it there for now. And you can see with this exposure node, we're really bringing back some of those, those shadows. And then this next node, I'm going to kind of decrease the midtone details just a little, just to give the overall image a little more smoothness. I'm just going to go to like minus 15, minus 16. And then we'll move on and we'll add back the contrast. Create a dot here and keep that up there a little bit. And then create a dot very bottom almost. Pull that down. And that to me looks really much better, much better. You can just see that this kind of had a 
a, a cast over it, a, a warm cast over the whole thing. And it just looks really flat. And now we've got a pop in. You can see all the different colors from the wall to the cabinets to the flowers. Um, everything really just stands out more. And now we just have a really beautiful shot that's revealing this dining room and kitchen area. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty simple, guys. Um, one last thing, one last thing I will do. I will do, just because the scopes are bothering me. We're getting a lot of things clipping over here, so I'm just going to create a point here. Bring these down to an acceptable level. And, and yeah, and yeah, I could sit here for another hour on this clip. But anyway, thanks again, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to click that like button down there. So I know you liked it, and so YouTube knows you liked it, and so everybody else knows you liked it. And also, feel free to subscribe. Um, I'm always making videos on DaVinci Resolve and color grading. So, until next time, I'm Marcel, and this has been The Modern Filmmaker. I will see y'all in the next one. Peace!